Last thoughts, Joe? I think it's good. CSU Pueblo lost the toss last week and had the offense on the field to start. You know, they've, they've been pretty lucky with being able to defer to the second half, but uh, all those superstitions are out the window now, Jim. Red Wall to kick it off for the Panthers. They move it right to left as we look at it. Thunderbolts to receive. It's a low end over end kick. Angled toward the uh, sideline. It's handled, though, by the Thunderbolts. Here's Wise across 10, 15, 20, 25. And he hurdles his way out to about the 30 yard line. Good stick. Sticking his nose in there and making the tackle. Marcus Tyus along with Austin Osborne. So the Thunderbolts, decent field position to start this first drive of the game from their own 29 yard line. Looked like they had something really working there, but uh, Osborne got low and hurtled Wise out to about the 29-yard line right when it looked like he was going to hit up the seam. Ball on the right hash mark. Bonner up under center. Fullback Neal is in the ball game. They shift the formation to the left side. They're going to go power to the left here with the extra tackle. And a roll out to the left by Bonner. Looks in the flat, fires it down the left sideline for Duncan. He's got it at the 49-yard line. Kieran Duncan deep up the sideline, pickup of uh, 20 yards on the play for the Thunderwolves. So opening strike right there gave Bonner plenty of time. He only gets sacked just a little over one time a ball game. Both these teams protect the quarterback very well. It's kind of nice to see that play. That's that layering pass, and the, the, the back was open, the tight end was open. Thunderwolves. Duncan going to split wide to the left. Radaba on the game in a slot to the right. Browning wide to the right. Browning comes in motion toward the line of scrimmage. They're going to run the wide receiver screen. Browning has. He gets a block across the 45. Turns his head, and he's up close to the first down. He's right at the 41-yard line. Got a good block coming over on the play that time for the Thunderbolts. Zach Martinez got out there in a hurry and cleared it out for Paul Browning. Right here, three receivers. They might see a screen to this side. Bonner straight drop back. Throws the out pattern, is caught, and Cameron McDonald has the first down. Boy, he's lucky he didn't get that ball stripped. Pretty good tackle attempt coming in there by Clemens. Ripped at it and looked like McDonald was going to lose it, but somehow held on and gets forward for the first down. A seven-yard gain. He kind of juggles the ball is on his way down. Then he takes himself out of the of the the game after that play. Second down and eight for the Thunderbolts. Ball just inside the 28-yard line. Going to go double wide out left, double wide out right. JB stays in the game. Straight drop back by Bonner. He has time. Looks, fires left side. He's got Duncan again. He's got the first down down to the 12-yard line. Very similar pattern to the first play of, from scrimmage. And this time, Duncan wide open. And it's a first down for the Thunderwolves at the 12-yard line of the Panthers. On the move here, first drive of the game. Karen Duncan had Cody Culbertson on his hip, and he just drug him across the field. Short. He is short, so the Thunderbolts are going to send the field goal unit out. It'll be Greg O'Donnell. This it's going to be a 20-yard attempt here. A little disheartening on this drive. Kester is a holder. Jake Ludwig is the long snapper. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is on the way, and it is good. 8.16 to go here in the first quarter. Thunderbolts strike first on the opening drive. They get three. They lead it three to nothing on Fox Sports Pueblo. Third down and eight for the Panthers. Ball at the 38-yard line. Double wide out left, single wide out to the right. This time the tight end lines up behind the right tackle. Miller in the pistol. Fans making a lot of noise here at the Thunderbolt. They look left, the throwback screen right, caught, pressure, and he goes down right at the 40-yard line. Our All first quarter. They can bring the power unit back in. Although Thompson comes out of the game, Letlow comes in. Radabaugh comes out. I'd imagine we're going to see some sort of double tight end set. Probably got the extra tackle in the game here. Browning going to split wide to the right. Boyd is in the game, extra tight end to the right. Duncan in the slot to the right. He comes in motion out of the left side. JB's in the game. He's the running back. Straight drop back by Bonner. Looks left. He's going to go for it all. Looks for Browning in the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown! Paul Browning went up with those big mitts and just snared it out of the air for the touchdown. It was good coverage, but the ball was thrown up high, and Browning went up and got it. Chris Bonner didn't look anywhere else but his good friend Paul Browning. Single coverage. You know, they dragged the, the, the man in motion toward that side, which I didn't think it was a very good move, but I'll tell you what, Paul Browning, single coverage, that's a tough matchup for anybody. 
O'Donnell in to try the extra point. And the ball's down, kick is up, and it is good. 10 to nothing, Thunderwolves, 124 to go in the first quarter. Back after this timeout on Fox Sports Pueblo. Oxy Fen Buddha Zone. Second down and 10. You know, we don't talk much about Joe Rosenbach and Josiah Flack, the two middle guys, because, you know, they pretty much all they do is make tackles in the middle, and they're very good at what they do. And everybody else gets kind of the, the pub, the secondary, and the defensive line, but those middle linebackers, those inside linebackers, are just solid football players. Second down and 10 from the 25-yard line for the Panthers. Press coverage by the pack corners, daring him to throw. Miller takes the snap. Here comes pressure. He's going to go deep down the right sideline, and they throw the flag as they're going to call interference perhaps here on Dickens. And like he had good position that time, but he was on the, he was on the inside. inside. But uh, that, that could be going back to uh, it, yeah, yeah, offensive it, it, pass interference. Yeah, he was on the inside and behind the, the receiver. Here's the call. Number five, offense. You know what, Jim? That was a great call. Because, exactly. You know, you could easily, there was a, they were tangled up and you could easily see it over there. But Steph Dickens was behind the receiver and on the inside of the field. And so it's a half to distance mark off. Second down and 10 now for the Panthers. They go no huddle. Thunder will stay in their base defense. Three down linemen with a linebacker blitzing off the edge. Low snap, but it's handled. Rolling left. Miller sets. Now looks over the middle. Nobody there. Now fires over. Intercepted at the 15. Back the other way. Rosenbrock puts his head down inside the 10. And he goes down at the four-yard line. Flag comes down late. We've got some extracurricular activity after the play. Looked like one of the linemen decked Morgan Fox. This is going to be a personal foul against, I think, big number 79 for the Panthers. As Ben Kofer just took a shot at Fox at the end of the play. Joe Rosenbrock, the silent killer. And indeed it is on Ben Coper, the big offensive lineman out of Dayton, Ohio. He just took a free shot at Morgan Fox after the play was over. You know, Rosenbrock did a great job just holding on to the ball. One of the guys came in there and tried to rip it free, and he just kept wrestling with it. And finally went down at the four, half the distance down to the two. You gotta love Joe Rosenbrock's hands on that play. I formation, McDonald the eye back, double tight end set, pure power here. McDonald off the left side, puts his head down, he's in, touchdown, Thunderwolves. Just like that. Thunderwolves up 16 to nothing with the extra point upcoming. Joe, I thought we were going to have for the third consecutive week the defense scoring a touchdown. They've done it the last two weeks. But they'll just have to settle for setting one up. Feels like a defensive score. They'll take credit for it. Love it. O'Donnell in to try the extra point. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. 13.06 to play here in the first half. Thunderwolves having their way with the Panthers. They lead it 17 to nothing. So it's third and about a foot here for the Panthers. They're down 17 to nothing. 12.15 to go here in the first half. Tight formation this time. They've got a wide out to the right. One man in the slot to the left. Double tight end set for the Panthers. Bring a man in motion to the left side. Now reverses to the right. Take the snap. They hand him. Oh, fumble! And it's loose on the deck. And the Thunderbolts appear to have it at the 32-yard line. And they indeed do. Schoen never got the football. And you know why he never got it, Joe? Because he saw a roadblock right ahead of him. There was no way he was going to get to the first down. Darius Allen on the fumble recovery, by the way. But, Joe, when they ran it out of the pistol, it looked like Schoen saw, hey, I got nowhere to go. And he was trying already to make a move to the outside and never secured it. And that's one thing, they that is only their 13th turnover of the year for Ohio Dominican. They came in a plus 17, but the Thunderwolves came in plus 26, make it plus 27. Uncharacteristic taking take two turnovers now in the first quarter plus. Bonner up under. And if you keep this defense on the field long enough, you are going to break one. As they've been out there all day long. They're already down 17 to nothing. 
Well, this is well, this is the fun time now if you're on offense. Double white out to each side. The ball's on the right hash mark. McDonald stays in the ball game. He sprints to the left. Bonner looks over the middle. Late pressure. Fires. And it's caught at the five. Touchdown, Duncan, but a flag is down. Now the question is, is it going to be a defensive hold or is it going to be offensive pass interference here? Somebody got awfully wide open on that. Bonner took a hellacious shot at the end. He gets up a little woozy. His helmet came off for a moment. And it does look like it's going to be a touchdown. Here's the call. Holding number 23, defense. Touchdown for the Thunderwolves. You know, that touchdown will make Chris Bonner feel a lot better. Yeah, he took a pretty good shot. He held it and held it very patient there. The pressure finally got to him, but he threaded the needle. And, Joe, I kind of told you, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I said it, it feels like a Kieran Duncan kind of day here today. You remember does. that? You did say that. I just wanted you to verify. You could have put me out there and said, I don't remember that. Kick is up, and it is good. 10.40 to go in the first half. Thunderwolves lead it 24 to nothing on Fox Sports Pueblo. Imagine a store that lets you get the... Ball to 43, they give it to Cam again up the middle. And he powers his way down to about the 41-yard line. And again, the hole shut down in a hurry there. I'll tell you what, Ohio Dominican, this defense, they're going to get worn out at this pace here. They've already been out in the field in eternity. We're down to 6.20 to go here. No huddle again for the Thunderwolves. And they're going to play action this time. Bonner rolling to his right under pressure. And this time he fumbles it. It's loose. At midfield, and this may be the break Ohio Dominican needs to get back in the ball game. They pop the ball loose. They're fighting for it, and it is Panther football at midfield. Recovered by the Panthers. First down, Panthers. Thunderwolves elected to go with a play action pass that time, and Bonner eluded the rush momentarily, and then the second hit got to him and popped the ball out. Like you said, they've been waiting for something good to happen for Ohio Dominican, and that was it right there. A turnover by Chris Bonner. He's done almost everything perfect so far in the first half. And then that. Kind of the home of the CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves is here. Fox Sports 1350. KCCY Pueblo. Fourth and three upcoming here for Ohio Dominican. This is where you don't want to jump off sides. you got to hold your water. I was watching on TV. Morgan Fox, number. he's wearing number seven. His 97 jersey got torn off last week. Crowd making a ruckus here at the Thunderbolt. Fourth and three for the Panthers. Thunder was showing Max Blitz here along the line of scrimmage. Miller having trouble getting his signals heard here. He is really shouting him out here. Long count takes the snap. Here comes pressure. Pass down the left side. Caught him wide open. It's going to be a touchdown. Blown coverage by the Thunderwolves and into the end zone for the score. And the Panthers on the board as JT McFarland got behind everybody. Nobody covered him. Well, Thunderwolves were showing blitz that time and had everybody up along the line of scrimmage and McFarland ran right by him down the sideline so the Panthers get on the board it almost looked now I, I'm sure it wasn't but it almost looked like he was standing on the sidelines not part of the play and then just took off a hush over the Thunderbolt here as the Panthers get on the board balls down kick is up and it is good. 4.19 to go in the first half. Panthers get on the board. It's 24 to 7 Thunderwolves on Fox Sports Pueblo. All right. Bonner was sacked his last pass attempt. Here comes pressure up the middle. He set up the screen and it's almost intercepted by the lineman. Boy, the Thunderwolves had a big play in the works there. If they get that ball completed, the wise, he had three blockers out in front. They had the perfect play call on Bonner, just didn't get enough elevation on that ball. And he's lucky it wasn't picked off and run into the end zone. Well, Mason Sawicki had that ball in his mitts and no one between him and the goal line. So now the Thunderwolves to punt the ball away as Kester comes out. The body language of the pack right now is not the best. It's not like what we've seen today. They're... Uh, it might be a little tired, too. Kind of a wide snap. They blocked the punt. And, and it's picked score. up inside the 15, inside the 10, inside the 5. Touchdown. And just like that, Ohio Dominican is back within a couple of scores here. As they got through there, the snap was kind of wide to the right. Kester went and got it. But that brought him right into the defenders. And they blocked the punt, and they scoop and score. 
And now it's 2.55 to go in the first half. It's 24 to 13. And the Panthers are right back in this ball game. Now's when a little self-doubt creeps in. If you're a Thunderwolf. Here, ODU. Low snap, but it's handled. The kick is on the way, and it is good. 2.55 to play here in the first half, and just like that, Ohio Dominican is within 10. It's 24-14 to 14 Thunderwolves on Fox Sports Pueblo. Well, to say this is a big play, it may be the understatement of the year, but fourth down and four here for Ohio Dominican. Once trailing in this game, 24 to nothing. They're within 24 to 14, and they face this fourth down call here in Thunderwolves territory. That timeout might have, been, might have benefited CSU Pueblo more than Ohio Dominican, Jim. Their defense set. Crowd coming to its feet. Miller sets now, looks over the defense, works out the call, looks, pumps, goes down the right sideline, he's got a man caught inside the 10 down to the 7-yard line, great catch on the play by DeAndre, or let's see, that's a Nick McKnight, beg your pardon. Wow, what a great and gutsy call by Bill Conley and his staff, fourth and three, and they take a shot on a senior corner, C.J. Roberts. So first and goal now for the Panthers from the three-yard line. Ball in the right hash. Again, they bring a man in motion to the right There's side. Two, guys two men in motion. in motion at the same time, and no flag came out. Two guys in motion That's at the same time. It's a touchdown for Ohio Dominican. The man in the slot, or the running back, was moving at the same time the guy was in motion. They don't throw the flag. It was that lean, Jim. They've had that lean before. And Hunter Hughes arguing, but... To no avail there. That's how you want to start this half if you're Ohio Dominican, though. You needed to score right away, and they did. Fourth down, you get a 26-yard pass play against a senior cornerback. Extra point attempt. Ball's down, kick is up, and it is good. 10.23 to go here in the third quarter. We got ourselves a ball game. Ohio Dominican within three. It's 24 to 21. Thunderwolves on Fox Sports Pueblo. This is the greatest day of this man's life. Woo! About 10 yards on the other side where Duncan's lined up. Bring Boyd in motion. Now your verses are the right side. They show a late blitz here. Bonner going to hand the ball off to McDonald across the 50, 45. Stiggs on his feet, inside the 40, still on his feet, inside the 30, down to about the 26-yard line. Best run of the day for Cameron McDonald. And the Thunderwolves in business now in Panther territory. They're going to spot it at the 27, first and 10 for the pack. And no matter what the result is here, Ohio Dominican's going to get the ball back with a chance to get ahead in the ball game, even if the field goal's good. So it will be a 40-yarder ball on the left hash mark. O'Donnell gives the O OK. Ball's down. Kick is on the way, and he just hit that very fat. Didn't get all the ball at all, and it is wide to the right. Missed it badly. So the ball will come out to the 23-yard line, and that's where Ohio Dominican starts this drive down by only three. That was just... Not struck well at all. Ball on the right hash mark. Double wide out to each side. Miller takes the snap. Here comes pressure off the edge. And they've got him. Morgan Fox sacks him back inside the 30, back at the 28-yard line. Some of the fans might be wondering, who is that guy? Because he's not wearing his usual number 97. His jersey got ripped last week. And they decided to do it, not repair it because he liked the way that number seven felt. Because it's tighter on his body. That's one of the things they talked about. The other jersey was a little bit looser. He felt like the offensive linemen were able to get a hold on him. I don't know if you saw that, but the right tackle from, C from Ohio Dominican was slapping his hip, kind of signaling that, that Fox might be coming from. Bonner takes the snap. Hands it right side, McDonald across the 15, cuts back across the 10, he's close to the first down, down inside the 10, he's going to be just short, I believe, by where they've got it spotted, but that's all right, makes it about second down on a foot. I kind of prefer that than first and goal from the 8, we'll see what the Thunderwolves do with it here, McDonald going to come out of the ball game limping a little bit. Uh, he needs to get back in the football game, Jim, I'm... And he is uh, now in a little bit more discomfort as he gets to the side. 
They need to get the ball down to the 8-yard line. They spot it just inside the 10. This is where you need your power package, and you need J.B. Matthews to find you two yards right now. Now McDonald, he's up now, moving around on the sideline, but he's not in the ball game here. Double wide out to the left. Now they shift the formation to the right side with Thompson and Boyd. Straight drop back by Bonner. Here comes pressure. Ball is out. I believe it is recovered by Ohio Dominican at the 15-yard line. They stripped Bonner, and they have the recovery at the 15-yard line. Boy, well, you want to talk about a turn of events right there, Jim. They came flying through on the pressure, and as Bonner lifted the ball up to throw it, it got stripped. Bonner really never went down on the play. The ball was just taken right out of his hand and recovered at the 15-yard line. What a w way to get the ball back. For Settles back. Barks the signals. Takes the snap. Here comes pressure. Gets the pass away. Too tall. And it's fourth down, and the Panthers will have to punt the ball away. He was trying to get it out here on the left side to Dez Stewart, who was open. Just sailed high and wide as he was rolling left. That's the toughest throw for a quarterback to make. And that ball just sailed on Mark Miller. The scary part of that is he was wide open. Daniel Wise. Wise is going to return the punt this time as he stands back at the 25-yard line instead of Dickens this time. You know, Steph may be winded playing that entire series of backpedaling. Punt is away. Good kick. High spiral. Why is going to take it at the 16? Nicks the first man. Miss across the 20, 25, 30. Here we go. 35, 40. He's got something. The punter to beat. He's got a blocker in front. Across the 35, 30. 25. One man to beat. Gets the block. Five. Touchdown. Touchdown, Daniel Wise. Unbelievable punt return by Wise. He made the first man miss. That was critical. Then got up the field. Two men laying back up the field injured for the Panthers. But again, the Thunderwolves break a game with the special teams. Special. 31-21. Thunderwolves on top by 10 as we play the fourth quarter here at the Thunderbolt. Double wide out to each side. Ball on the right hash mark. Miller takes the snap. Here comes pressure up the middle. Gets the pass away down the sideline. Got a man open inside the 20. Where is the coverage, Jim? Just threw it right in the seam up that sideline. The ball hauled in by Des Stewart all the way down to the 18-yard line. It's a zone defense by the Thunderwolves, and they just throw it past the quarterback and in front of the safety. Just a streak pattern up the sideline. Safety doesn't have enough time to get over. Down to 7-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. Miller comes up to the line of scrimmage now, backs off into the pistol. Double wide out to each side. They're tight to the formation, though. Now sends a man in motion to the left side. Miller takes the snap, looks over the middle, fires to the end zone, touchdown! Wow, little skinny post caught by Dez Stewart. And the Panthers get a quick score with 6.54 to go here in the fourth quarter. And with the extra point coming, they could draw within a field goal here. That was just too easy. Three plays, touchdown. Set up by the great return. Now you go back to that last possession by the Thunderwolves. That's when they had a chance to really put this game to bed, so to speak, by just getting a couple of first downs. Instead, they couldn't even get one. They had to punt the ball away. Great field position on the return. Three plays, and the Panthers right back into the game here. Extra point upcoming from Brent Wall. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. 6.54 to go here in the fourth quarter. We got ourselves a great ball game here at the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolts lead it 31 to 28. Time out on the field on Fox Sports Pueblo. We have two. Still run it. The only other thing we have not seen today from CSU Pueblo is that naked boot from, from Bonner to, you know, he doesn't run much. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Browning it wide to the right. They're going to come up and press coverage. Duncan has a big cushion on the left side. Straight drop back by Bonner. Looks right. Fires right. Browning with a spectacular catch at the 48-yard line. 
Oh my goodness, Joe, is that an incredible grab by Browning for the first down to move the chains? Why not? Why not Bonner to Browning when you need three? Second and seven for the Panthers. Fans on their feet here. Miller barking out the signals. Takes the snap. Here comes pressure off the edge. They got him! Back at the 15-yard line, Darius Allen flying in from the right side. Morgan Fox from the left. They made a sandwich. That's the first time today they've gotten to him in that fashion, and it couldn't have come at a better time, Jim. No time to celebrate. They're out of timeouts. Third and 13. Miller back in the pistol. Takes the snap. Looks. Fires over the middle. Caught for the first down. Across the 35 to the 36-yard line. That'll stop the clock momentarily. Great grab on the play by Des Stewart. How do you give up a 19-yard pass play on a third and 17, third and 13? Let's see if they clock it here. Take the snap, and they do. They want a reset here. As they clock it with 45 seconds to go, it's first and 10 now for the Panthers. Double wide out to each side. Ball just inside the right hash mark. Here comes a pressure. Quick out right side. Dropped! It'll be fourth down. They were just trying to get more or less half of it there to set up an easier fourth down play, but by dropping it, now it makes it fourth down and ten, and it's all or nothing right here for the Panthers. Crowd on its feet, roaring. Well, Miller, no stranger to picking up big fourth downs in this game. Their first touchdown of the game was on a fourth down play. Ball at the 36-yard line. Takes the snap. Here comes pressure off the edge down the middle. Incomplete. No flag. And the ball game is more or less over. I was waiting, Joe. I thought they weren't really turning looking at the football, but the ball fell incomplete. The officials never even reached for the flag there. The Thunderwolves defense comes up with a big stop, and they're heading to the national semifinals. How about that? Score 24 to start and have to hang on. I'll be back. All right, Joe. Now they're in victory formation. And they take the knee, and that will do it. The Thunderwolves advance to the national semifinals next Saturday. The site to be determined by the NCAA will find that out tomorrow.